Welcome to our homestead. Today we're going to show you how to make the easiest, quickest, best tasting sandwich bread you've ever had. Let's go. Now this video was a special request from some of my subscribers. And I actually have three other bread videos. We love making bread here on the homestead. I've got three other bread videos. They're all very different. This one is different as well. This one, in my opinion, is the best tasting and it is the fastest and easiest. You're going to get some amazing sandwich loaves in only about two and a half hours. And for a fully risen bread, that is very fast. So let's show you how to make it. So we're going to start with two cups of very warm water. Now very warm in this recipe is about 110 degrees. Most of your hot water systems in your homes are going to be at about 120 degrees so they don't burn you in the shower if you turn it up all the way. So this is almost as hot as what it is in your water heater when it's fully heated. This temperature will not kill the yeast, so do not worry. Once we've measured out our two cups of very hot water, we're going to add to it a half a cup of just plain white sugar. Well, in our case, it's cane sugar. There's a little bit of brownness to it. That's no big deal. Add some extra flavor. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the sugar to the water and get it to start dissolving a little bit. Once we've got things dissolving a little bit, we are going to add one and a half tablespoons of active dry yeast. Now, I've actually used instant dry for this same recipe, and I haven't noticed any difference in the rise or the texture of the bread. So, this is actually what my original recipe calls for, but you can use instant dry also. So let your yeast wake up. This is going to take about 20 minutes. You're going to get maybe about an inch plus of foam on the top and then we're ready to go on to the next step. So I want to show you which flour we are using and there's a specific reason why I'm talking about this. It's because I'm gluten intolerant or am I? So any regular breads or anything that I eat out at the store or at a restaurant send me into severe uh, GI issues that send me right to the bathroom. However, this bread flour, this double zero, actually, actually double zero pizzeria flour imported from Italy that you can buy on Amazon, I can eat it. It has a higher protein content, it's double zero flour, but in Italy and in Europe, most of Europe, they are barred from spraying certain chemicals, certain herbicides and pesticides on their crops, wheat being one of them. I can eat this with no problem. So are we all actually gluten intolerant or are we allergic to the herbicides and the pesticides or the GMO modifications that they've done to the wheat in the United States? I'll leave that up to you to investigate, but I'm telling you, I have serious problems with all other wheats here, not these from Italy. So if you're interested in this, it's in the description below. So you're going to need a pretty big bowl for this. It's going to rise quite a bit. So get your largest mixing bowl that you have and we're going to add six cups of that special bread flour to it. From here we are going to add one and a half teaspoons of whichever salt you like. This happens to be a sea salt. You can add a little bit more or a little bit less, depending on how you like your bread flavored. It's been about 20 minutes. Look how much foam or head that we have on our yeast mixture here. It's time to add it to our flour and salt mixture. So we've made just a little well in the center and we're going to pour everything right down into the middle. Now make sure if there's any sugar that is undissolved in the bottom of your um, yeast mixture that you get it into the bowl as well. Just start bringing it together with a fork and once it's to that point where we can discard that fork, uh, we're going to start to knead it. I just tend to keep scraping down the sides and folding it over a little bit on itself in the middle 
just to get everything on the bottom hydrated so that I can start kneading it. If you want, you can add about a tablespoon of oil just for some added extra flavor and a little bit of fat throughout the mixture. We're going to knead this until it's nice and smooth and we'll show you what that looks like in a second. So here is our dough. We've been kneading it for about six minutes. It's got a little bit of shine to it, but it's also a little bit shaggy and that's okay. We found that kneading it for any longer than this really doesn't add to the crumb, the structure of the crumb or anything like that. So this is perfect for this loaf of bread. You can see there's some springiness to it. So that gluten has developed. What we're going to do is we're going to put it back in our bowl. We're going to put a little oil in the bowl, cover it up, nice warm place, and we're going to let it rest, rise, proof for an hour. We just use a little bit of spray oil and then move our dough ball around, kind of coat it all the way over, cover it with a towel, and let it set in that nice warm spot for an hour. So it's been an hour and we've got our risen bread dough right here. Something I forgot to mention earlier that actually helps out a lot is to put a piece of plastic wrap over the top of your rising dough. And what that does is it keeps the moisture in and it seems the texture of the bread seems a lot better. It also keeps it from sticking to the towel that you've put over the top. So we're going to punch this down and we're going to turn it out onto just, you can use a floured surface. Usually it doesn't stick too bad. And we're going to give it one more knead. And what this does is going to tighten up those gluten strands a little bit more. We're going to do a second rise in our three loaf pans here. Now these are regular sized loaf pans. And you know, we found that three actually works the best. We tried four and the loaves were just a little bit too small for us. So use your best judgment on what you want to do with your bread. Now it doesn't take much kneading, only about a minute or so for the, your second knead. We're going to divide these up into three equal, or hopefully equal, pieces here. Form them into a small loaf. And we're going to place them in our pans. Actually, before we place them in the pans, you want to give them a nice spray down with some spray olive oil. That'll help them from sticking. When I get this loaf formed, I will pinch the edges so it stays together. Just give it a good, nice pinch and get it formed into a nice long or oblong shape, nice loaf shape there, and that will be perfect. So our dough cutter here is actually pretty sharp. What I'm going to do is I'm going to score it on the top three times. We are going to set these back in our warm area for 30 minutes and we're going to recover them with that plastic wrap so the top of the bread does not dry out. So part of the way through your second rise with your loaves in your pans, you want to heat up your oven. So that gives you time right when you hit the 30 minutes for your second rise, you're already heated up and you can get them right in the oven. So of course our last step, get them in the oven. They will be in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for 30 minutes. All right, the timer's going off. Let's take a look at this gorgeous bread. Look at that. Isn't that some gorgeous bread? And it's so fast to make. And in my opinion, it's one of the easiest breads I've ever made. You've got a nice even crumb, it's crusty on the outside, it's super soft on the inside, and light and fluffy. It's not dense at all. It's so nice to have this as my go-to recipe for bread all the time. It's super fast, super easy, like I said, and the kids love it. 
as always, we will leave the full ingredient list and recipe in the description below if you have any questions. Now from our homestead to yours, have a wonderful blessed day. I'm gonna continue to eat this bread. Take care, bye.